All right. There. Now, now I'm faking it well. Do you remember when everyone was all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over the Pi 400? Well, it's still a fantastic device that I was late to the party on getting. It harkens back to the age of the personal microcomputer from the 1980s, where the keyboard and motherboard are contained in one device with the business end of the machine on the back side. This is just a fun thing to use for any number of reasons, and it's a great device for kids to learn and experiment. I have an almost unhealthy obsession with the, uh, the OpenSUSE project, and absolutely adore the Raspberry Pi, so putting together the fun, flexibility, ease of management, and reliability of OpenSUSE with the low cost and highly capable hardware seems like an absolute perfect combination. OpenSUSE is touted as the maker's choice distribution, and many makers out there love single board computers. The combination of the maker's choice distro and a very common single board computer used by makers, well, seems like the perfect fit. The question I want to answer is, how well does it open SUSE? If you buy the Raspberry Pi 400 kit, you get this whole box of fun, and maybe the coolest part of the contents of this box is the lowest tech item. Well, arguably the lowest tech item. I mean, Gutenberg might have something to say about that. And that is the book. This beginner's guide, this Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. I would almost say that the whole kit is worth it for this book. I think it's going for $100 now. Who knows if it'll stay there. To me, I think this book is worth a lot. So just, just to kind of show a little bit of the book here. It gives you, you know, a nice welcome table of contents. It's very well ra laid out and written. This uh, Here's the author here. Great writer. He's done very well. well it, goes, it starts off with like to get to know your Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. And then chapter two is getting started with your Raspberry Pi. So getting it set up. This also includes like the Pi 400 or Pi 4 as well as the 400. It goes into, you know, where you should plug it in primarily. This is good to know as to which is display one and two for many projects. So this is, this is, it's a good reference. It's a great reference. And then it'll go into like using a Raspberry Pi. It kind of goes over a lot of the OS basics. So this would be great for like someone new getting into Linux. I think this is a great way to start. And then it'll go into programming with Scratch. It teaches you about the Scratch interface and, and how this works. If you've never heard of Scratch, Scratch is a, a way to visually learn how to, to do some programming. So it, instead of typing the code out, it allows you to block things together. Very cool. And then it goes into Python programming. It comes with a the Stani, I think it's Stani, Python IDE is what's already built into the, the Noobs OS that this comes with. After that, it'll go into the physical computing with Scratch and Python, which is super cool because you have these general purpose IO pins on the back of, uh, of the Raspberry Pi, which is blocked here by a nice little cover. Physical computing with a Sense Hat, the Raspberry Pi camera module, Installing an operating system to an SD card, and then there's some other like appendix references and so forth. So this is such a cool book. I I kind of want to buy another kit just just for the book. Call me crazy. There are plenty of YouTube videos of, of people tearing down the Pi 400, so that is outside the scope of of this video. So I'll just let you know, this has a Broadcom BCM 7211 quad core Cortex. A72 ARM V8 64-bit system on chip that runs at 1.8 gigahertz. What does that mean? Eh, it's pretty peppy. It's slightly peppier than the, the Pi 400. Uh, this one has a job, so that's why it's in a case. I'm not going to open that up for you. It has four gigabytes of RAM, BGCN and AC wireless dual band, so 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz wireless networking, Bluetooth 5.0 with actually has a gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3 one USB 2.0 port. Has the GPIO pin headers here. Under a nice little rubber cover. Your micro SD slot, two HDMI, micro HDMI, and your power, which is USB-C. And that runs at five volts. When you get your Raspberry Pi 400 kit, you have what is called the Noobs edition of Raspberry Pi OS included. That means new out-of-box software. I think Raspberry Pi OS is all around Pretty fantastic. It has all the tools you can get right to work with, learning, making, or doing a thing. For every 
practical sense, this is perfectly fine to use just as it is. If you like it, don't change a thing, just use it. My issue with Raspberry Pi OS is that it feels dated to me. Sure, it does the job, but with the look and feel of the mid-2000s. I have been spoiled by OpenSUSE and the tumbleweed offerings of Plasma and all the lickies and chewies that come with it. I had to ask myself the question, can I recreate all the tools on an OpenSUSE base? The answer is yes, at least so far as I've dug into it. I can get what I want out of the OpenSUSE ecosystem to have the fun with the Raspberry Pi. Could there be a noobs OpenSUSE edition of the Raspberry Pi? I think so. If you do a quick web search for OpenSUSE Raspberry Pi 4, or even Pi 400, you'll end up on this page here. It gives you some quick technical data, and then right here what you need is to download the version of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed for the Pi 4 or 400. So here I'm going to go ahead and get the KDE image, which is the plasma image. Sometimes you may have to go to the general download directory, but that's not always necessary. Here I'm just going to download this to my Tumbleweed folder. Once it is downloaded, I'll put it on an SD card. Running OpenSUSE on the Raspberry Pi is like running it on any x86 based system. Grub pops up, I start it, and it goes through the process. When you first boot up OpenSUSE on the Pi, there's only the root user. Username, root, password, this is a tough one, Linux. The first boot does take a little bit. Once it's up, it feels like a fresh, fast, peppy computer. And it's really quite a joy to use. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the appearance. I don't like a light theme. I think there should be a dark theme by default. And I'm going to install a very special Breeze dark theme. I think this Nathan guy is probably pretty trustworthy. That and apply it. And for colors, I'm going to do the same thing. Open Seuss Breeze Dark, and this Cubicle Nate guy. Go ahead and use this one too. There, so much better. Oh my gosh. I think that now this is a perfect looking desktop. Go to User and Group Management. I'm going to add a user so I'm not hanging out here in root. Here I have no users. I'm gonna add user's full name, Cubicle Nate. Password, uh, Cubicle Nate. All right, see if it complains about that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And this is good for now. But before we go on, we're going to add some software here. I'm going to add the Thani Python IDE for beginners. It's the same that comes on the noobs Raspberry Pi OS. I'm also going to add the libgpiod package as well. This way I can take advantage of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and continue. Now that this is complete, I can go ahead and finish this out. I'm going to log out and log in as the Cubicle Nate user. The first login does take a little bit to complete. I'll go ahead and clean up the desktop here. I don't know what those are for, but I'm going to start with making this look the way I want it to look. Not a massive amount of customization, and I should make a global theme instead, but uh, I'm not there yet. All right, now it looks the way I want. There's one more thing that I would like to do, although I think this is nested a little too far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add Flatpak and Flathub. First, I'm going to install Flatpak. Yes, of course. Mind you, I didn't change the root password there. I should, but I haven't. Yes, we're going to add that. Next, I'm going to add the Flathub repository. Next, I'm going to add Scratch. I'm not going to worry about PyCharm at this time. Flatpak does take a bit to install especially the first time. There's some run times that need to be pulled down. After you install Flatpak, it's a good idea to reboot your system to get all the Flatpak goodness to be set up properly and populate your menu accordingly. Search for Scratch, it shows up in the menu, and I can start it. With the same experience you would have on the Raspberry Pi with Raspberry Pi OS, you can have this experience on OpenSUSE using a flat pack. And you'll always be assured it's the, the latest version of Scratch available to you through the flat pack. And I can do Thani, the very basic Python editor, just like what is in 
the Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide. This essentially covers the first half of the Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide book, programming in Scratch and Python using OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as opposed to Raspberry Pi OS. You can of course do all the, the fun multimedia activities, such as going to YouTube and searching for your favorite content creator out there, you know, and watch something that's mildly interesting. So you may ask, why should I use OpenSUSE over Raspberry Pi OS? For me, I'm gonna say it's more current software. The desktop environment in Raspberry Pi OS is good, but I just happen to find Plasma to be better. It's a more enjoyable experience for me. It's less effort to keep updated. You can very easily run the necessary command in the terminal to perform the updates. Sure, it's not the same kind of graphic user interface, but it's very easy to keep updated and I don't have to think about it. This makes for a more comfortable learning environment for me. Rolling also makes for an arguably better development and education platform, arguably. The other great thing about running OpenSUSE is having YAST. Having this kind of access to the core functions of your system without knowing what the terminal commands are is very important, especially if you're a lazy sys admin like myself. This makes running and managing your Raspberry Pi so much easier and OpenSUSE does make a great effort ensuring their software is hardened, even on the rolling distribution. Having OpenSUSE Tumbleweed running on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 400 gives you an unfettered, full-fledged desktop Linux experience. This is essentially the same experience I would have on my other systems that I run. Using the Pi 4 or 400 makes for a great base to do all kinds of testing and playing with technology, and they are a great educational tool. To answer the question, how well does it open SUSE as a general computing device? I give it four and a half out of five Geekos. To give it five out of five, someone, well maybe me, has to put together a meta package or something to easily install all the extra bits. You're also taking a lot of time to download and install OpenSUSE on an SD card, as well as setting up Flatpak and adding the additional software. It does take desire to actually want to run OpenSUSE. I think it's completely worth it. I really enjoy it. The Pi 400 feels snappy running the Plasma desktop environment. And really, it makes me want to have more of these things. You know, at least one for each kid, right? That would make sense. The next question I'm going to have to answer is, how am I going to do physical programming with this thing? How am I supposed to access those, those GPIO pins easily with my, my jumper wires? It, it does seem kind of difficult. Not real easy to do to go back and forth. And, and how can I take advantage of all these other fun little toys you know, that I have with the Pi 400 and doing physical programming? Coming very soon, I will demonstrate my solution for accomplishing that. Until next time, see us.